Hi guys, I'm back at home now. It's been a really funny day. It feels like I've given you like hourly updates in terms of what's happening. Um, so I went, I went to see Amma and then I've just driven home, which took uh, two and a half hours. Traffic was really great, so I'm here. It's not even dark yet. So it's been a really good day. I went, I had my hug, which was really amazing. Um, it was, it was good. I, you know, you get, you, you sit in these chairs, you have your little ticket and then you get moved up closer and closer, closer. Then when you get, get up on the stage, they have more chairs and then you sit in the chair and then you just get nearer and nearer and you have instructions like don't touch Amma, just touch the sides of, of the chair and, um, you know, just kind of lean in to give her a hug and she'll hug you. So I had, I leaned in, had my hug and she whispered like this mantra in my ear, which, um, twice which didn't make much sense to me um but there was a feeling of the thing with these things is it's really subtle and in my experience they usually take a while to to have an effect but um what happened in this case was that um as soon as i left and drove home the whole journey and things on the radio and stuff all had to do with two men being in love which was weird to see like five gay couples happy laughing and to see it over and over again was kind of funny and um to me that's kind of a message or a symbol that uh, love is possible and that there's hope which um to me is really meaningful and makes sense in terms of you know my situation and why i went there and how i feel about life and da 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 but <laughs> The other side of it that I found really interesting, first of all, um, the whole thing is run by volunteers and obviously, you know, they need to rent the space and they need to make money to, to, to be able to set up the whole thing. I mean, she's got loads of people working for her. The, the sound system, the, the boards with all the mantras and stuff, it's really involved. So I was sitting next to the sound guys with their laptops. So they all had to be paid. There were at least six or eight of them. Then you have all the staff members who are doing the food and then you have little stalls where they sell things and um, meditation courses are offered and things. So they do, you know, generate an income for her. So there's all this stuff around her that kind of allows her to travel around the world and do this kind of stuff. But what I noticed was um, what, yeah, what's really interesting to me, you know, like any, any person who is elevated to this status of being special, like this enlightened being. It's always interesting to see how the people around those people, those enlightened beings behave. I was queuing for, I mean, there were queues everywhere, but you know, which I'm surprised that I was so calm and like chill the whole day. Cause I, I arrived at eight and I left at I think two. And I was totally happy and fine. And I'm usually not a big on queuing. I was just kind of, in the place of the observer. And um, when I went to get some food, but while I was waiting for my number to come up, uh, my queue to come up, um, I, I was in the queue and there were a lot of angry people. Like there was this, there was this um, German lady yelling at the woman at the, um, at the counter and the woman just said, don't get, get upset with me, you know. Don't, you know, I'm not responsible for anything. Don't get upset with me. And then, um, I I sat next to this lady when I was queuing. And you know, as you do, I just kind of chit chat to people. I'm like, hello, you know, is it your first time here? Have you seen Emma before? Uh, you know, just to make conversation, just to be, you know, just to chit chat and stuff and to pass the time. And she looked at me and she said, yes, I've been here 20 times and Emma is an enlightened being and um, I will come again next year. I said, all right. And I mean, it was just like a conversation killer. She was so intense. And I just thought, you know, you've come here for 20 years. Um, this enlightened figure who has all this love to give and all this care for humanity. And after 20 years, you haven't learned how to speak to the person sitting next to you who's just trying to make small talk and to be nice. I mean, the whole thing is about love. So I don't understand why you, you'd be so miserable. I just thought this woman should go see Emma every day. <laughs> Maybe it would help. <laughs> she was she was really miserable, like a really unpleasant, unfriendly woman. 
And also I was, um, when I went into the queue and tried to figure out where to go, I was talking to this other lady and she, it was her second time there and she couldn't, she couldn't um, stay because she had to pick up her child in like an hour. And um, the first time she went, the, it was held at the Alexandra Palace and it was on a Tuesday or Wednesday and she just walked in and it took like half an hour for her to get a hug and to walk out. So she was surprised that she had to wait so long. She was unhappy with that. And she had a GZ, which meant that she would have been in the second cycle of queues. So what they do is they give you a number, uh, um, they give you a ticket with a letter on it and a number. So I was Q4. So if you have a number on the side of the letter, then the first time they go through the alphabet, you just go when your letter's up. So it said Q5, so I was up because I had a Q. But then if you have a Z, you have to wait till they get through the alphabet the first time, A to Z, and then they start it over. So she should have waited, she would have waited another three, four hours really, and that's what the guy at the um, office told me. Um, and when I was walking, when I was going up to Amma, and you know, I was, I was moving up the chairs, this lady, she was on the other side, but in front of me. And I was like, oh wow, she made it in, you know? And um, she, uh, she noticed me sitting there and when she had a hug and walked away, she said, oh my God, I beat you first. I beat you, I got in there first. And I thought, wow. So she cheated her way in and she's super competitive about it. Now she's like rubbing it in my face that she got in there first. So the people who go there, it, the atmosphere and the environment, it was very competitive. You know, it was, it was an odd, it's, it, it just kind of confirmed to me that you shouldn't elevate people to being special or enlightened. Because this lady, the, the miserable lady who didn't want to speak to me, she didn't want to speak to me because I was an enlightened being like Amma, so I wasn't worth her time. I was, you know, like, she didn't want to waste her breath on me. But it's just common courtesy and decency and I think what they forget is that the whole thing about Amma is that she is loving and that she's kind to people. And I think, you know, she may be enlightened or she may not be enlightened. She certainly has an amazing presence and energy around her. And I, I really think that she opened up something for me. Like, I really feel like my heart chakra opened and I saw something and it was like evidence or proof that Thing, beautiful, wonderful things can happen, miracles can happen, love can happen. Um, so certainly she's got something to her and, you know, reading about her history and things, she's been devoted to God, spirit, the creator, the universe since she was very young. So she's just a normal person who's connected with spirit her whole life. So she may be enlightened as a result of that or she just may be more spiritual or she's just a normal person who practices her spiritual practice who, I said practice twice there, but you know what I mean, someone who just works at it and she does it naturally. So I think we can all be that. And I think the danger by making someone special and having special powers is that you then get people like that who will step over bodies to get to that special person and who have no interest in love or, or human kindness. All they want is to get something from this amazing special person. So I don't want to tarnish all of the people there with the same brush. There were a lot of um, happy, smiling, loving people there. There were there were a lot of, you know, there were a lot of positive people and a, a lot of smiles and a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of kindness. Like the woman I spoke to the meditation um, at the meditation table, she was lovely. And when I had lunch, I sat around the table and they were having the best time and laughing and it was just, you know, positive. So it's not everybody, but I just think there's a, there's a real danger in making someone special. Because then you just get people who want that specialness for themselves. It's like bu buying a Gucci bag, you know, like getting the accessory. So I, it was worth doing. I really, I'm glad I went. Uh, the last couple of days have been great as well. I, I, like I made the video, I went to Stratford I booked myself into this hotel, which um, when I got there, it was no good. So I changed things around and I ended up with this amazing hotel, which I loved. And there was a spa there and I had the most relaxing, wonderful time. And I watched the Shakespeare play and um, yeah, it was great. I loved it up there.
so Stratford is a place I would definitely visit again. It was really nice. So it's been a really nice couple of day, days break. I left here on Tuesday and now it's what, Friday afternoon. So three days, really wonderful. It's been super, super nice. So um, I'm glad to be back with my pillows, <laughs> providing me with color back at my place. Really pleased with um, the couple of days that I've had. It's really been fun. Um, and I'm excited to get back to work and do stuff. But um, yeah, it just makes you, I think what I've learned from it is just to, um, you know, never label yourself as special or having some sort of special insight or special power or whatever, because we all have it. We're all the same. You know, the whole, we are all one. It, some people are just more elevated than others. And I don't know how else she could frame herself, but it just, it was interesting to me. It was like, an ex it, I was, I was an anthropologist today. I was watching, I was people watching and seeing what the responses were. So I think over the next couple of days, I think I'll get some more insights because in my experience, these things are very subtle and they're vibrational. Like for instance, when I learned Reiki, I did the Reiki um, one, two, and three, I did it quite quickly. I remember I did them quicker than you're supposed to. And I, I noticed that with each one I did, um, like a week or two or three after I did each one, there was a real major lift in terms of my energy and my intuition. So if you're an intuitive person as well and you want to deepen that, meditation is the best because that gets you to that place yourself. Um, and especially meditations that aren't guided, meditations that connect you with your true self. And things like having other people do it for you through, you know, Reiki, what, what, what is it, the violet flame or whatever, where they raise your vibration to, to, to give you this, this um, not give you anything, but raise you to a certain level. That also really helped me. And that takes a while to kind of integrate. So I'm going to keep an eye out to see what's going on, but it was really positive. So if anyone's thinking of going to see her, I would, I would recommend it. It's, it's, it's. It was a really fun, positive experience. That's it. That's all I have to say on that. So um, thanks for um, you know following me on my little journeys here. So I've had a really wonderful time. And watch out for the videos that are coming now. I'll start doing the, um, the, the week. I'll do the weekly tomorrow and uh, look at the monthlies next week, weekend sometime. And obviously the daily tarot. Um, I do personal readings as well, just to get that in there. This hasn't got anything to do with work, really. But um, I've got a website called gregoryscott.com, and I do astrology and tarot readings and numerology readings. So if you'd like a private reading with me, then check that out, um, and I'll speak to you soon.